What's happening guys? Welcome to part four in this Siamese neural network series where we try to implement a Siamese neural network model from a paper all the way through to a final end application that we're eventually going to be building with Kivi. Now this tutorial is the one that I've been waiting for because we're starting to get into the deep learning component of this series. So let's go on ahead and take a look as to what we're going to be going through in this video. So we are going to be doing three key things here. So we're going to first up build an embedding layer and this is effectively going to form almost like a feature mapping pipeline for our specific model. So we'll pass through an image. This is going to go through our embedding layer and effectively convert our raw image to a data representation that's going to represent what we're going to pass through to our Siamese neural network. So think about it as though we're effectively translating it to something that's going to allow a neural network to determine whether or not the person is verified or not. So it's almost like a data translator to a certain extent. Then what we're going to do is we're going to create an L1 distance layer. So I'll show this a little bit more once we actually take a look at the paper, but the way it's sort of going to work is we're going to have two streams of images. So we'll have our anchor and either our positive or our negative. And these are streams are sort of going to be like rivers. And the way that we compare them is using this L1 distance layer. So we actually bring the rivers together and we use our L1 distance layer to compare whether or not the images or the embeddings are similar enough to be verified or not. So that's what we're going to do in step two. And then last but not least, we're going to compile them together to be able to build our Siamese neural network. And then in the next video in this series, what we're actually going to do is start training our Siamese neural network model. Okay, but without further ado, let's actually get to the tutorial and let's do it. So ready to do it? Let's get to it. Alrighty, so what we're going to do in this tutorial is three key things. Let me bring the mic a little bit closer. So first up, what we're going to do is we are going to be building our embedding layer. Then we are going to build our distance layer. So this is going to be our L1 distance layer. And then last but not least, we're going to make our Siamese neural network model. Now, specifically what we're going to be doing. So remember, we are replicating this paper here. So Siamese neural networks one shot image recognition now we are specifically we've made a few tweaks and the numbers are going to be a little bit off but that's fine we're going to be building this neural network here now i said right at the start think of this as having two streams of information so we are going to be passing through two input images and we are effectively going to be combining them down over here where it says l1 siamese distance so you're going to have two streams, so an anchor and a positive or a negative. These are going to be passed through to our embedding layer. And then they're effectively going to be compared once you get down to here. So we're going to compare them using our L1 Siamese distance layer. Okay, let's kick this off. So rather than talking anymore, let's actually start building it. So we are first up going to create a function that takes our input image. Now, the paper uses an image which has the shape 105 by 105, but we've gone and, oh, why is that weird? We've gone and converted it to be 100 pixels by 100 pixels. So these numbers at the top here represent what our output shapes are going to be. These values down the bottom specify what are the different layers within our neural network. Now, because we've gone and converted our images to be 100 pixels by 100 pixels, they're going to be a little bit off, but that's perfectly fine. It's still going to work. So. First up, what we now need to do is create a function which builds our embedding layer. So we're going to create a function and we're effectively going to be passing through all of our different layers. So let's start setting up our function and then we're going to add to it incrementally. Okay, so that is the beginnings of our model. So I've gone and written two lines of code there. And again, we're going to build this incrementally. So I've written def make underscore embedding. So this is defining a new function called make embedding. And I've closed it off with a colon. And then what we're going to be doing is we're going to be returning our final embedding model. Now, you're probably thinking, Nick, where is this model value coming from or model class? Remember, right at the start in one of our earlier tutorials, we went and imported a number of different TensorFlow dependencies. So namely, we imported our model class and we also imported a bunch of different layer type components. So we imported the base layer class. We also imported Conf2D, which is going to be used here. We imported Dense, which is going to be used over here. 
we import, and I'm going to explain this in more detail, don't stress. We import a max pooling 2D, which is used over here. So we perform a convolution and add a ReLU activation over here. And then we go and perform a max pooling. So it's going to be convolution, max pooling, co well, convolution, ReLU, max pooling, convolution, ReLU, max pooling, convolution, ReLU, max pooling, convolution, ReLU, fully connected. So this is where we go and perform our Siamese distance layer. And then we go and perform another fully connected with a sigmoid, then produce an output. Lots of fancy words, but really we're just passing it through a data pipeline. Okay, so what we are, neural network pipeline really. So what we're going to do is we're going to build this up step by step. So first up, what we want to do is we want to deal with our input. So let's go on ahead and create our input. And ours is going to be 100 by 100 pixels. So these numbers are going to be a couple of pixels off, but it should be pretty much the same. So to define our input, we can use our input layer. So right up here. So let's go on ahead and create our input layer. Cool. So that is our input layer now created. So I've gone and written INP equals input, and then I've specified the shape that we want our input to be. So in this particular case, it's going to be shape equals 100 pixels by 100 pixels by three channels. So if I copy this out of here, so that is our input now defined. So if I write out input, you can see that what we've got is we've got a Keras tensor with the shape of none because this represents the batch size. And then we've got 100 pixels by 100 pixels by three. We can actually pass through the name here as well. Um, name is input image. Copy that. Rather than having this weird name over here. So you can see that our input layer is going to be called input image. Cool. So that is the first part of our neural network done. Now, if you wanted to stick with the exact same shapes as the paper, all you need to do is change the input shape to be 105 by 105. So if I wanted to do that, type 105 by 105, and you can see that our input tensor is now going to be 105 pixels by 105 pixels. Cool. All right, what's next? So the next layer that we want to build in is our convolution plus a ReLU activation. And in this case, so remember our convolutions composed of two key things. Well, really three key things, but we're gonna ignore the last. So our convolution takes the number of filters that we wanna pass through. So in this case, it's going to be 64 filters. And our filter shape is going to be 10 pixels by 10 pixels. Now, normally you'll take a look at a parameter called stride, and this is how far our pixels or our filters actually move across the image. But in this case, we know stride is going to be one. So you don't, you can sort of ignore that. And we know that there is an activation that we need to apply here as well, which is ReLU. So let's go on ahead and implement our convolutional layer. And this is going to be using the conv2d layer. So let's go on ahead and do it. I'm going to call this layer C1, or we're going to name it, create it as a variable called C1. So uh, you'll see that in a sec. Okay, that is, uh, this should be capital D. That is our conv to the D layer now created. So I've gone and written C1 equals conv to D. And then we've gone and passed through that we want 64 filters, as our paper says. We've gone and specified that we want the shape to be 10 pixels by 10 pixels, 10 by 10. And we've gone and applied an activation, which is a ReLU, which again, in the paper says it's got a ReLU activation there. And then in order to pass through or start connecting our neural network together, we're grabbing our input and we're passing it through to our convolutional layer. So this is how the Keras functional API wants its input. So let's actually take a look at this. So if I grab this layer over here and we're gonna paste it up there. So we've got our input that we defined already. We've got our convolutional layer now. So if we take a look at C1, you can see the shape is 96 pixels by 96 pixels by 64 channels, which is pretty close to this, right? But it's not perfect. So remember, this, is, this represents our input shape. These are the actual layers. So here we've got 64 channels and we've got 96 pixels by 96 pixels. We've actually got 96 by 96 by 6. Wait, that one's perfect. So that's perfectly fine. Okay, so we can ignore that. That's oh, wait, it's because we had 105, 105 up here. I thought there was something weird there. So if we change this to 100 by 100, there you go. So you can see it's going to be a little bit different. So rather than having the exact same shape, which is 96 by 96 by 64, we've got 91 by 91 by 64. 
if we wanted to have the exact same shape, we could change this to be 105 by 105. And you can see we're getting the exact same shape now. But that's fine. We are going to stick with 100 by 100 and then we are going to keep going. So we, if I change this back to 100 and 100, that is effectively what we've got here now. Now we've got one more layer that we need to implement, which is our max pooling layer. And then really everything from here on out is pretty much repeating itself, at least for our embedding layer. So let's go on ahead and implement our max pooling layer. And then we should have our building blocks sort of ready. So let's do it. Okay, that is our max pooling layer implemented. So I've gone and written there. So I've created a new variable called M1 to represent our max pooling layer or max pooling layer one, because we're going to do it multiple times. And then I've set that equal to max pooling 2D. Pass through that we want 64 units of that. So you can see that it's 64 units. And then it, we want it to have a shape of two by two. So it's effectively going to take the max value out of a two by two area and return the max value. So it's effectively condensing down the amount of data that we've got. And we're specifying padding as being the same here. So this is something that I noted when I was building this up originally. You want to have the padding as being the same in order to replicate a similar output shape. And then to that, we are going to be passing through our convolutional layer. So if again, we copy this out. And if we take a look at layer M1, you can see it has the shape 46 by 46 by 64. Here it's expecting 48 by 48 by 64. But if we go and change our input layer back to 105, you'll see that it mimics that exactly. So if I go and do that, you can see we have in fact 48 by 48 by 64, 48 by 48 by 64. Cool. So this means that we effectively have our core building blocks ready for this neural network, right? So we've gone and implemented our convolution plus ReLU plus our max pooling layer. So these two layers sort of form a core block. So you'll often refer to a specific neural network block referred to really frequently whenever you're building neural networks. So these two are a block which gets replicated a few different times. Now, obviously they've got different shapes. So in this case, you can see for at least for our first block, we've got a convolution with 64 units or 64 filters, which has a shape of 10 by 10, and then a max pooling layer with 64 uh, units, which has a shape of two by two. But if we scroll on, you can see the convolution shape changes a little bit, the max pooling shape changes a little bit, so on and so forth. So let's go on ahead and implement our next block, which is this two or these two over here. So we can do that reasonably easily. All we need to do is copy these. Should we copy them or write them from scratch? Let's write them from scratch. Okay, so this is our first block. So I'm just going to comment this up. So first block and then second block. Let's do it. Okay, that is our second block now implemented. So I've gone and written two lines of code there. So I've written C2 equals conv2d. And this one, we're going to pass 128 filters with a shape of seven by seven. So again, our second block is going to have a convolution, which is 128 filters with a seven by seven shape with a max pooling. Oh, we'll come back to our max pooling layer. All right, so convolution with 128 units with a seven by seven shape which haven't, has a ReLU activation, ReLU activation. And then we're passing through our M, uh, the results of our max pooling layer. So remember, our max pooling layer is called M1. So inside of parentheses, we are appending to the end of it and we're passing through our max pool or the output of our max pooling layer or output from our graph, which is going to be M1. We're storing that inside a variable called C2. So this layer over here is implementing this layer over here. 
So if I zoom out a little, it's implementing this over here. Cool Leo. Then we've gone and done our next layer as well, which is our max pooling layer. So you can see max pooling over here. And we've gone and written M2 equals max pooling 2D. And then I've gone and specified that we're going to have 64 units with a shape of 2x2, two two, which has a same padding. And then to that, we're going to be passing through our C2 convolution or the output from our C2 convolution, which you can see there. Now, if we go and copy this, and as per usual, paste it up over here. So if we take a look at the output from our C2 block, we're going to get a shape of 42 by 42 by 128, which is pretty much mimicking this. Are we on 105? Yeah, so we're on 105 right now, which is why we're getting exactly the same shape. So 42 by 42 by 128. And then if we take a look at our max pooling layer, we're getting 21 by 21 by 128, which is 21, 21 by 128. So it all is looking good at the moment. So remember, this is going to have exactly the same shapes because outside of here, we've got the shape 105 by 105. In our actual model, we're going to be using 100 pixels by 100 pixels. But this is sort of like a good sense check, really. Okay, so what's next? So we have... Oh, what have I done there? Oh, wrong. So we've gone and done these two layers. We've gone and done these two layers. We've got to do this layer. And then we've got to do that over there, I think. Yes, and a flatten. All right, let's go on ahead and build our third block. Okay, that is our third block now done. So we've gone and written two lines again, and again, pretty much exactly the same as what we've written up here. But now we're passing through our map, the results from our max pooling two layer, so this one over here, to our next convolution layer. And again, we've gone and written the exact same thing, or pretty much the exact same thing. So C3 equals conv 2D, specifying that we want 128 filters with a shape of 4x4. 128 filters with a shape of 4x4. So that over there, you can see that there. And we're specifying that we want an activation of ReLU, activation of ReLU. And we are passing through the output of our max pooling, the second max pooling layer, or the max pooling layer from our second block as the value that's going to be accepted into that convolutional layer. So M2 over here. Then we've gone and specified another max pooling layer, which is pretty much identical to what we wrote over here and what we wrote over here. Again, same exact number of units and a same exact shape. So M3 equals max pooling 2D, 64 comma, and then inside of parentheses, our shape, which is two comma two. And then we've gone and specified our padding as equaling same and passing through the results of our convolution from over here as the value at the end. Cool. All right, so what's left? So we've really, we don't have too much left now. So we've gone and done, let's take a look now where we're up to. So we've gone and done our input, we've handled this, we've handled that, handled that. So this is our first block, this is our second block, this is our third block. So our next two lines are going to be a convolution plus a fully connected layer. So this is effectively going to be a convolution and we'll probably need a flatten plus a dense layer over here. So let's go on ahead and implement that.
Okay, I think that is our embedding layer now done. So I went and wrote an additional three lines of code there. So we've gone and created a final convolutional layer, which is specified as C4 equals conv2D. And this has got units of 256 filters, which is over here, so 256. 256 with a shape of four by four. So 256 with a shape of four by four with an activation of ReLU. Activation of ReLU. Cool. And then to that, we are passing through uh, the results of our third max pooling layer. So we're passing through M3. And then we are flattening our convolution. So you'll see this in a second, but effectively we're taking all of the outputs of our convolutional layer, which has three dimensions and we're flattening it, flattening it into a single dimension. So let's actually take a look at this. So I'm going to copy this over here, paste it up. Uh, this should, oh, we didn't actually paste our M3 layer up there. So let's copy this. Cool. All right. So if we take a look at the output of M3, which was a max pooling layer from our third block. We didn't actually take a look at those shapes. Uh, let's actually do this properly. So C3 has the shape of 18 by 18 by 128, which is going to be over here. So 18 by 18 by 128. Output from our M3 layer is going to be 9 by 9 by 128. 9 by 9 by 128. And then we are taking this M3 output and we're passing it through to our convolution. So if I take C4, you can see it's 6 by 6 by 256. And again, keep in mind, this is based on the input shape of 105 by 105. So if we change this to 100 by 100, the output shape is going to be a little bit different. Perfectly fine. So uh, what were we doing? So C4 has shape 6 by 6 by 256, 6 by 6 by 256. Now, it just so happens, if we multiply 6 by 6 by 256, we get uh, 9,216. So those units are going to be flattened in our feature vector. So if we take a look at the shape of our F1 shape, we have 9,216 units, which is the output, which is effectively this multiplied by this multiplied by this, which you can see over there. Then what we're doing, and remember F1 is just flattening all of these elements together. So rather than having it in the shape of 6 by 6 by 256, you're just going to have a single dimension. So then, and that is the output of the flatten layer. And then if we take a look, what we've gone and done is we've passed our flatten layer to our dense layer, which should give us 4,096 units back. So if I type in D1, you can see that we've got 4,096, which is our 4,096 feature vector which eventually then gets passed to our Siamese distance layer. But we're going to come back to that in a second. And keep in mind, the last activation that we had was a sigmoid as specified over here. So fully connected plus sigmoid. And again, this is a little bit uh, densely written up, but you can sort of see how these all fit together. Okay. I think that's it. Now, what we need to do is we need to pass this through to our model class in order to sort of compile it. Because at the moment, we haven't actually gone and brought this all together as a model. So let's go on ahead and do that. So when I first wrote the function up here, so def make underscore embedding, then I also specified this last layer. So return and then model inputs equals outputs equals and then names equals. So now what we need to do is specify these. So let's do it. Okay, and that is the final component done. So I've gone and written, so I've basically just gone and filled this out. So I've written model equals inputs, and then inside of that, I've passed through a set of square brackets and passed through our input, which is right up here. And then I've gone and specified outputs. And again, what I've gone and passed through is our final layer, which is this dense layer over here. So what we're going to be outputting is this big feature vector with 4,096 outputs. So this is what I meant by the two streams or the two rivers. So we're effectively going to have two rivers of data flowing through or two rivers for our neural networks. And each of those rivers is going to be outputting a feature vector of 4,096 units. So this is almost like translating our input images of our faces into a embedding or a feature vector. So yeah, what have we gone and done there? So I've written model equals inputs equals a uh, model. And then inside of parentheses, I've specified inputs equals, and then in square brackets, pass through input, comma, outputs equals D1, which is this. 
and then I've specified name equals embedding. So if I copy this, bring it over here, that is effectively compiling our model. So if I write uh, mod equals model, that's our final model. So if we, uh, can we type in summary? That gives us our final model. So this is the model based on 105 by 105. But that effectively gives you an idea of what our model is actually or actually looks like. Now, the cool thing about this is that if I bring this shape over to this side, this is effectively one final model, which mimics what we had in our paper. So this paper is obviously a little bit small, but um, if we take a look, so our input image over here, so 105 and 105 uh, by one. So that's our input image. So this looks like it might be a single channel. We're going to be doing ours on color. Hence why it's going to be a three. But 105, 105 by three, that's our first layer. If we take a look at our next layer, 96 by 96 by 64, 96 by 96 by 64. Take a look at our next layer, 48 by 48 by 64, 48 by 48 by 64. And then if you go all the way to the end, I'm not going to do every single layer. We've got a dense layer, which has... 4,096. We're in business, guys. So that is our embedding layer now done. Now, what was I going to do? So because our input shape is going to be slightly different, if we type in what we're actually going to have is 100 by 100 up here. So if I go and run all of these layers again, you can see that our input changes the output shape a little bit but eventually we're going to get a 4096 output layer because that's how many units our dense layer has anyway so we're good to go there so that is our make embedding function now done so if we go and run this we're in business so if we wanted to go and create this model so let's go on ahead and do it so if i type out model equals make embedding that is our model now generated and if i type in model.summary that is our model. So we've got all of our different input layers. And again, you could name these and make it a little bit cleaner, but I haven't done that. I've sort of skipped it. But this effectively forms our embedding. So which is, I'm going to bring this back over here, which is pretty much from here all the way through to here done, apart from this L1 Siamese distance layer. We're going to do that now. But that's that done. Pretty cool, right? So that is, let me uh, zoom out or not zoom out. So that is step 4.1 now done. So we've gone and built our embedding layer. Now what we need to do is we need to bring them together. So remember I was talking about the two rivers, right? So the two rivers as part of our neural network graph, we're going to have our anchor and we are going to have either our negative or our positive image, which forms the basis of our one shot classification. So if we want to join these rivers together, we need some way to compare them, right? So what we're actually going to do is we're not going to be adding them together. So effectively our rivers combining, we're actually going to be subtracting them. So this is our L1 Siamese distance layer, and it's going to tell us how similar our images actually are, which is effectively what allows us to perform our facial recognition or facial verification. So let's go on ahead and define this distance layer. So it's going to take the embedding or the output of these embeddings. So our 4,096 feature vectors, it's going to take the output or the, those as the input, and it should effectively output a value out of this. We're then going to pass that to a fully connected layer and then output a final result. So let's go on ahead and do this. Okay, so the first part of that, uh, that's our distance layer done. No, <laughs> so that the first part of this is defining a new class. So we're going to be creating a new class for our custom layer. Now, this is actually really, really cool. So as part of producing this tutorial, I actually did a ton of learning. But this actually shows you how to create a custom neural network layer. So if ever you need to go and do some other custom stuff, this gives you a good sort of template as to how to go about doing it. And I've also defined this so that when we actually go and export our model, we'll be able to bring this layer as part of it as well. So let's go and finish this out.
Okay, that is our L1 distance layer now produced. So I went and wrote four additional lines after I showed you the class layer. And these are the init section is pretty sort of self forward. The call section is a little bit more important. But let's actually take a look at it in its entirety. So I've written class L1 dist, and I've written this in caps. You don't need to, but it's good practice or sort of common practice with Python. So L1 dist, so these are all in caps. And then to that, we're passing through our layer class. Now this comes from all the way up here. It is the abstracted class or the base class for our Keras layers. And then what we're doing is we're performing a little bit of inheritance inside of our init function. So I've written DEF and then underscore, underscore, init, underscore, underscore. So it's the base init method inside of a Python class. And then I've gone and passed through self so we can operate on ourselves. And then I've gone and passed through asterisk, asterisk, KW arg. So this allows you to work with the this specific layer as part of a bigger model. So when it comes to actually exporting and importing this, having this actually defined makes your life a lot easier. So when we actually go and export it, we're actually going to use the abstracted versions. So passing this through means that if we wanted to go and pass through specific keyword arguments, it's going to handle them innately. Cool. So def underscore underscore init underscore underscore and then inside a parentheses self comma asterisk asterisk kw args and then close parentheses and then colon and then we're just going and performing inheritance. So super and then parentheses dot underscore underscore this should actually be underscore underscore init afterwards and then close parentheses. Cool. So that is that now covered. Now this is where the magic happens. So let me write a comment. Magic happens. So the core function is actually, or actually tells this layer what to do when some data is passed to it. So I've written DEF call, pass through self, and then remember our two rivers are gonna combine. So our anchor image and either our positive or our negative is going to be brought together and we're going to compare their similarity. So I've written input underscore embedding. So this is going to be the first river and then validation underscore embedding, output of our second river. So this is effectively going to be our anchor embedding. This is going to be either our positive or our negative embedding. And then we are returning tf.math.abs. So this is going to return an absolute value. And we are subtracting the validation embedding from our input embedding. So we're in input underscore embedding minus validation underscore embedding. So that is our L1 distance layer now done. So when we actually go and call this, it's effectively pretty much the same as how we might call another layer. So we can write L1 equals L1 dist and uh, has no attribute L1 dist in it. Have we gone and written something wrong there? Let's check. Okay, that is not working. And the super object has no attribute underscore L1 dist underscore underscore init. Oh, I don't know. Maybe I typed something wrong there. Oh, actually, I didn't, uh, I didn't go and rerun that cell again. My bad. All right, so that's worked out. So remember, we had it like that. So if I go and run that, there you go. That's the error that we we're getting there. So if I just go and pass through those underscores again, we're good. So that is our L1 distance layout now produced. So if we go and take a look at it, there's not going to be nothing inside of it because we're not passing anything through yet. But what we're effectively going to do is we're going to pass through effectively our anchor embedding and our validation embedding. And we are then going to combine this into a dense layer, which is over here. So our fully connected layer and then to produce our final output. So that's the last bit, which we are going to do over here. So that is our custom L1 distance layer. And this is a defining characteristic in a Siamese neural network. Sometimes what you will see is that they implement a slightly different function here. So they'll actually have three rivers or three streams so that you'll have an anchor and a negative and an anchor plus a positive at the same time. And you'll actually compare all three of those at the same run or is part of the same run. In this case, we're just doing it with two streams or two images as part of our graph. So that is perfectly fine. So let's take a look at what we did there. So we first up, so we're creating our Siamese distance class, uh, L1 distance class. And we've gone and defined our init method, which is pretty self-standard. Uh, so this performs inheritance. 
and then we're doing our actual magic so this is actually performing our similarity calculation which is effectively just this really we're just grabbing one stream we're subtracting it from the other and we're performing an absolute function over the top of it nothing crazy there cool all right that is our l1 distance layer now defined so that's 4.2 done the last thing that we need to do is combine all of this together. So right now we've got sort of like abstract uh, components. So we've got our embedding layer or our embedding model. We've got our L1 distance layer, but right now that our streams aren't sort of all running simultaneously. So we actually need to bring all of this together to produce our Siamese neural network. So that's what we need to do in step.4.3. So what we're going to do is we're going to create another function. So def make Siamese model. And we're going to bring it all together. So let's actually do our first bit and then we'll take a step back and take a look at what we've gone and done. Okay, so we are going to be defining another similar model to what we did up here but we're going to bring it all together now. So what I've gone and defined is first up, I've written def make underscore Siamese underscore model, open, uh, open parentheses, close parentheses, and then colon. <clears throat> and then I've gone and written a comment to handle our inputs. So first up, what we're doing is we're defining our two inputs because we're going to have two streams. We need two images that are coming through. So we're going to pass through our input image, which is going to be specified as input underscore image. And then I've set that equal to input name equals input underscore image so this is effectively creating one input here this is creating a secondary input so let me actually separate this so this is our going to be our anchor image input in our network this is going to be the validation image in the network Right, so input image equals input, and then I've gone and passed through two keyword arguments. So I've specified name equals input image and shape equals 100 by 100 by three, because that's going to be the shape of our input images. And then we've gone pa and passed through our validation image. So I've written validation underscore image, so that's our variable name. And I've set that equal to input. And then again, two keyword arguments. This time, the name of our input layer is going to be called validation underscore image, and I've set that equal to shape 100 by 100 by three. Cool. What we now need to do is we need to take these inputs and actually pass them through to our embedding model because we're right now our raw inputs are just going to be we're at this stage we need to take these raw input images and pass them through to our embeddings and then what we're going to do is combine them with our siamese distance layer so let's go on ahead and do that Okay, let's pause there. I realized that what we should have done is rather than calling our embedding model just model, let's actually call this embedding because otherwise it's going to be a bit weird and it's going to get kind of confusing. So I'm going to run this again, run this, and then convert this to embedding. Cool. So our embedding layer or our embedding model is actually going to be called embedding now rather than it just being called model. Kind of dumb doing that. So we are then going to wrap this up. Let me actually go and finalize it and then I'll explain it. Okay, so that is our Siamese distance layer done and our, we are actually passing through our two streams. So I've gone and written Siamese underscore layer equals L1 dist, which is beginning to use our distance layer. And then I've just gone and named it again. I'm super pedantic. I like naming. So Siamese underscore layer dot underscore name equals distance. So this means that when we actually take a look at our model summary, you'll actually be able to see that name there. And then I've gone and created a new layer now. So I've written distances equals Siamese layer. And then to that, what we're actually doing is we're passing through this input image to our embedding model, which we had from up here. So again, I've wrapped this inside of a function, but it's kind of like redundant at the moment. Doesn't matter. We'll take a look at that later. Or there's possible improvements there. So if somebody goes and cleans this up, do let me know. I'd love to see it. So we're taking our input image, which is effectively this and we're passing it through to our embedding. So if I go and run that and type in embedding and input image, 
that is effectively what we're doing. So we're taking this input image, which has a shape of 100 by 100 by 3. And the output that we're going to get out of that is our 4096 units, which are out of this. Then what we actually go and do, so what we do is we actually do this on our validation image as well. All right. And if we go and type in, so let's do uh, input embed equals this. And val embed equals embedding and then validation image. Cool. So that is effectively our two sets of data now transformed into our feature vectors, which is a 4096 unit output so if we take a look our input embedding is going to we're passing through an image which is 100 by 100 by 3 and the output that we get is a unit or an output of 4096 values right and again same thing that we're going to get from our validation embedding 4096 units cool so then what we finally do is we go and take our Siamese layer which is going to be called L1 dist. And because remember, this is going to take two inputs. So if we take a look at our call function, it takes our input embedding and our validation embedding, which is effectively what we've got there. So I'm just going to delete that because we don't need that and that. So what we're doing is we're taking our Siamese layer and passing through our input embedding, uh, input embedding and validation embedding. And that is going to output a 4,096 vector or a vector which has 4,096 units, which we're then going to finally pass through to a, another dense layer, which is going to pass through either a one or a zero. So we still got to do that layer. But by passing through these two embeddings to our Siamese layer, we get a result of 4,096. So this represents the distances between our input embedding and our validation embedding. Now, all we need to do is pass this through to our final layer to tell us, hey, do these embeddings or are these embeddings similar enough to consider them the same person? So that's our final component that we need to do in here. So let's go on ahead and do that. And that's done guys. So that is our Siamese model now produced. So remember I said that the last thing that we needed to do was combine these distances into a final fully connected layer with a sigmoid, uh, with a sigmoid activation. That is what this line is doing. So I've written classifier equals dense. And then we were going and specifying that we want one unit, one unit. Specifying that we want an activation of sigmoid, sigmoid. And then to that, what we're doing is we're passing through these distances, which have a shape of 4,096 units. So we're passing through 4,096 units in, and we're going to get one output value out, which will either be a one or a zero. So if we take a look, if I grab this line and bring it over here, uh, this should be distances. So let's define that distances equals Siamese layer. Boom, that is our classifier. You can see that we are going to have an output of shape one. Output of shape one by one. Now, the last line that I wrote is effectively combining all of this together. So I've written return model. Remember, this is our base level model class. And I've specified our inputs as being our input image and our validation image. So our input image and our validation image. And then our outputs are just going to be our classifier. So remember, we're going to have both of our streams running simultaneously. They're going to combine together on our L1 distance layer. And we're going to output our classification layer, which is this final little bit over here. Yeah, so what did we write there? So return model and then inputs equals and then inside of square brackets, we're passing through two inputs. So input underscore image comma validation image. So these are these two components over here. And then comma outputs equals classifier, which is outputting this classification layer there. And then we'll specify the name as Siamese network. So if we go and do this, let's actually just copy this over here. Siamese network. 
equals that. Did I go and run that? Yep. Okay, cool. So if I run Siamese network, that's a Siamese network fully done now. So if I type in dot summary, take a look at that. So we've gone and passed our input image. Pardon me. So our input image, a validation image, which then goes through our embedding layer. They then get combined through to our L1 distance layer, which you can see there. And we then combine that to a dense layer, which then outputs our single value. That is pretty cool, guys. So we've now gone and combined all of that together. So that is our Siamese neural network now done. Now, if we go and use our function, if I go and run this, so I'm going to call it Siamese network or model. And run make Siamese model. That is exactly the same thing. It's right down the bottom dot summary. That is our Siamese neural network ready for one hot or one shot classification, not one hot, one shot. Cool. So we've now successfully gone and built this. Now in the next video, what we're going to start doing is start training this model. But for now, let's actually take a look at what we did. So I'm just going to minimize that and that so we can actually see. So in step one, what we went and did is we went and built our embedding layer. So we went and defined all of the different blocks that we saw over here. We then went and defined our distance layer, which represents our L1 distance. And remember, it's really just subtracting the two rivers from each other to determine similarity. And then last but not least, we combine them all together inside of our make underscore Siamese underscore model function, which then returns our Siamese model, which looks like this. And on that note, that does wrap it up. So thanks so much for tuning in guys. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give it a big thumbs up, hit subscribe and tick that bell. See you in the next one. Thanks again for tuning in. Peace.